Hi guys. Today what we want to do is go back and revisit our bidding series and go over a couple of things that I feel like we missed last time. Primarily which bits I like to use in which series, how we progress to them, and when you might change bits or bridles. So I'll start them and I'll ride them at first 20, maybe 40, potentially the first 60 rides in this bit. Not necessarily, but definitely those first 20 rides. Like when I'm in the round pin, I'm going to be using this one, okay? Now from this bit, I can, go, I can go a variety of directions, right? And it really depends on the horse that I'm riding and the feel that I'm getting from them and how much feel I need to either add or back off from. See, some horses are so feely that it's easy for them to get scared by the bit. And so you're not going to want to go to something like say a twisted wire snaffle that's really small like this one on a horse that's really light and really feely and really wants to get off that bit because you're going to scare them right and what i want to do is i want to try to find middle ground with all of my horses what i really shoot for the ultimate goal is to have that horse turn around exactly the way that they would if i weren't sitting on their back in other words if they were out in the pasture and they need to turn around and go get a drink of water how are they going to do that? Well, the first thing they're going to do is cock an ear and look that direction. Then they'll point their nose that direction. Then they'll rock their weight back slightly on their rear end and they'll step with that inside foot and follow with the, the outside foot. So when I ask my horse to turn to the left, I want things to happen just like that in that progression. If I get that, then I know that I am truly communicating with that horse effectively. If I get anything other than that, then the horse just doesn't understand what I'm asking and there's resistance there, right? And that's what this bit is for, is to get control of their mind. And so I, I need to find the bit that they're most comfortable with that gets me the level of feel that I need to get that natural turnaround. Because what the bit is at the end of the day is it's a communication device. And if you've got them distracted by either the, the an, an improper mouthpiece, whether you've got it too short, your hands are too heavy, you've got the wrong reins, whatever, it's going to distract from that communication, that teaching. That's what that's the whole point of this whole of, of all of these devices. That's the whole point, proper communication. A lot of times these really heavy horses that don't like to flex laterally are going to gap their mouth in order to escape the pressure of the bit. This is a, a pre-signal or a pre-cue. As I pull this bit to the right, these wires are going to bump, 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 bump. They're going to bump across that horse's bars and lips and tongue. And it's going to give them a pre-signal. I don't progress until I, until I am 100% sure that the horse understands what I'm asking or I feel like the horse the bit is somehow confusing or distracting the horse. The horse is 100% confident with this bit. It doesn't bother them. There's no distraction whatsoever. So I'm going to stay in this bit until I get as much softness as I possibly can and I'm going to take it just as far as I possibly can. Let's say I stay there for for a dozen rides and the horse doesn't get any better, doesn't get any softer. Then I'll step up to this full cheek snaffle. This is a running martingale. Is it limits the travel of my reins? my my cue is is consistently in a downward fashion so that it can encourages the nose to come down when i'm pulling laterally it brings that nose right down here it just encourages that nose to come right down in the area where i want it to get that collection in the turn okay 